Skills to Saranac Lake in Upper New York State. Colonies of wealthy city dwellers have gouged out sites for their summer cottages. Here the rich boys can rough it for three or four weeks out of the year while they escape the monotony of making money. Most of them will make a big show of enjoying the setup, really live it up. And all the time their ulcers bleed at the thought of being cut off from the rat race and the scramble for the almighty buck. Sometimes they're accompanied to their plush lean-tos by more than just a case of nervous ulcers. With some, it's deadbeat relatives, restless wives, jealousies, hate, even enemies. When that happens, there is usually violence. I know. I know, and I appreciate your concern, Emmett, but just this once, try and forget we're friends and limit your legal advice to my business. I'd like the luxury of worrying about my own skin. I don't know, but I don't want the police called in. At least not yet. Ah, that's the ticket. And I want the best private detective you can get hold of. Good. Have him call up right away. No, no, tomorrow if possible. All right. All right, thanks, Emmett. Oh, say, Emmett, uh, if you and the wife can break away, why don't you come up for the weekend? Oh, well, maybe next weekend then, eh? All right. Goodbye, Emmett. <coughs> three-hour drive to Kennard's Lodge. I wasn't even sure he wouldn't be a corpse by the time I got there. Within the last six weeks, there had been three attempts on his life, or so his lawyers claimed. I did a little digging into my client's background before I left. Thirty years ago, he'd started out in the construction game with a broken-down cement mixer and a big itch to get rich. Today, Kennard was one of the biggest building contractors in the state. Now, someone was out to measure him for a box, and I had to find out who. Great exercise. Really develops the pectorals. Yeah, great. <sighs> Smell that air? <laughs> Makes you feel alive. <laughs> great. But you didn't bring me up here to smell the air. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, Hammer. <laughs> you know, sometimes... I just wonder if all this exertion isn't a bit foolish for a man my age. <laughs> now, what can I tell you that you don't already know? Well, to begin with, who do you have in mind who might have a reason for killing you? I'll level with you, Hammer. I'm not the kind of guy who goes around pointing the finger at everybody just on the chance that one of them might be guilty. That's why I called you in instead of the police. But I don't propose to expose my friends needlessly to the rigmarole of a police investigation. Uh-huh. Well, then, how many of your friends are staying here at the lodge with you right now? What? Uh, no, no, no. Well, apart from Mrs. Cunard, there's only my business partner, Lloyd Randall. Hmm. Yes, and Larry is due in this afternoon. Larry? Yes, my son. I'm having him come up with some of his fraternity brothers. Now, what about your business partner? What's his name? Uh, Randall. What about him? Well? Well, naturally, as my associate, he would uh, stand to profit rather considerably by my death. <laughs> but Lloyd has no money problems. He's a rather wealthy man in his own right. Uh, yeah, well, with some guys, when it comes to money, enough is never enough. Which leaves only uh, Mrs. Cunard, doesn't it? Does it? I guess it does, so? So I suppose you already know that I'm a couple of years older than she is. A couple? Well, 14 to be exact. <laughs> but I didn't think it was uh, still in fashion for young wives to knock off their middle-aged husbands. It's still being done in some counties. Now, don't get me wrong, Hammer. I asked you to come up here to find out who's trying to murder me, and that's exactly what I want you to do. But I'm positive there's no need to suspect my wife or Lloyd, for that matter. I'd stake my life on either one of them. Well, you may be doing just that. Come on, there's time for a swim just before lunch. No, I'll just sit this one out, if you don't mind. All right, whatever you want. Oh. Hey, if anyone asks, you're just an old friend up for the weekend, all right? Fine. Kennard added up to a regular Joe. Maybe he wasn't playing it smart by refusing to offer up any suspects. I don't know. But I had to hand it to him. At least he wasn't like most of the squirrels who were usually ready to accuse everyone of mayhem, including their pet parakeet. Why was it some guys knock themselves out for 30 years so they can take it easy someday, and then when they've got it made, they start hefting 100-pound weights around for a hobby? They're heavier than they look, aren't they? Yes. Well, I think I'll stick to push-ups. I'm Lloyd Randall, Kennard's partner. Hello, Mike Hammer. I suppose he's filled you in on me. 
He's a great guy, Kennard, great guy. Mr. Hammer, I know who you are and why you're here. How I know isn't important. Oh? No, none of this is the way you think it is. Nobody's gunning for Cunard. In fact, it's the other way around. Is that a fact? He and I have been building for a showdown for years, and now it's come. He'd like nothing better than an excuse to dissolve our partnership, but that's one thing that's not going to happen. Well, what does all this have to do with the motor exploding in his face and all the other attempts on his life? The phonies, every one of them. If someone were really trying to kill him, why would he send for you instead of the police? And how is it that every time there's an attempt on his life, he's always alone? Nobody around to call him a liar. What motive would he have? I can think of one, to send up a smoke screen, make himself look good. Oh, that's Cunard. He spends his life trying to make himself look good. Oh, and at the same time, he could get rid of me. How could he get rid of you? Somehow get me involved, blame me for all this. Look, I know the man. Fifteen years I've had him up to here. I know what he'd do. But he's not going to dump me, not that way. I'm not sitting still for it. Hello? This is Mrs. Cunard. Mike Hammer, Julie. Hello, Mr. Hammer. How do you do? You must excuse me for not coming down to greet you before. He's not a guest, so we can drop that part of the farce right now. He's a private detective. Your husband's I know hired. what he is. Well, then you also know why he's here. Please, Lloyd. As you can see, if you have any questions about Cunard, don't ask his wife. Why, that's ridiculous. I want to help in any way I can. Well, then why don't you tell him what you really think of Carl? What he's done to you and to me and to everybody. Lloyd, this is hardly the time. On the contrary, it's the only time. If Carl has his way, we may not have another. Mr. Hammer, you'll have to forgive Lloyd. He's a little upset. He... And you don't have to apologize for me, not anymore. I don't have to keep quiet now. Please, Lloyd. If I can be of any help, Mr. Hammer. You already have, Miss Kennard. <laughs> bucket and then leave it to me after that all right thanks a lot good man uh rope ah uh, we're gonna need a lot of rope and you make sure that paul doesn't come in while we're getting this thing set up hey mr Kennard. gee i didn't see you there now, what's all this mr Kennard stuff the name is car my boy car how's your room okay fine it couldn't be better good good say i really would like to thank you for inviting us up here this weekend oh listen when larry wrote me about this initiation of yours coming up you know, when I think of what I had to go through to get into the fraternity, boy, we really had to be able to take it. <laughs> but now you know the way they're banning hazing on the campus. What are they trying to do, turn you all into a bunch of debating societies? Yeah, it's all different now. Yeah, well, there's no molly coddling up here. You got all the freedom you want. <laughs> well, we plan to use it, Carl. Hey, um, Clip, how's Larry getting along? Really pitching in? Yeah, well, um, yeah, he's got a lot of potential, Carl. He's going to be a good man. Oh, excuse me. Sure enough. Well, come on, fellas. Let's get this thing in gear. Come on. Mike? Hey, what gives? My own fraternity. Yeah, I'll have a real show tonight. They're initiating a new pledge. You see them? That's me. 30 years ago. Okay. Oh, Barry. Got a minute? I want you to meet an old friend of mine. This is Mike Hammer. How do you do? What do you think? Chip off the old block, huh? Nice meeting you, Mr. <laughs> Hammer. Oh, uh, Larry, I had a talk with Clip before. Good boy, you know, but... Uh, you know what I think? Next time around, you're gonna beat him out for fraternity president. Sure, sure, Dad, why not? My father never quite got elected. Got to get it for you one way or another, huh, Dad? Now you're talking. They don't give it to us, we take it from them. <laughs> yeah. Come on, uh, something else I want to show you. Out there. All right, what is it? You're lucky. Whoever well, we placed the explosive in this wasn't planned for keeps. What do you mean? Well, they put the charge in the wrong place. Look here. If he'd placed the charge up here instead of back there, you'd have been ripped to pieces. So I'm lucky. Whoever put it there didn't know his business. Or maybe he knew it too well. I was sure the shot had come from the lodge, but questioning the college kids got me nowhere. One thing I knew, 
Whoever was trying to kill Kennard meant business. Well, that was no smokescreen, Randall. If that bullet had been six inches lower, your partnership would have been dissolved. All right, I was wrong about the attacks being phonies. And I think you knew about it all along. Hey, where were you when the shot was fired? He had nothing to do with it. Well, then let him answer the question himself. I was in my room. Well, where else would I be with those kids taking over the place? Mm, how about you, Mrs. Kennard? She was in her room, too. She had a headache. How very convenient. Convenient or not, Mr. Hammer, I did have a headache, and I was in my room lying down. Mm, yeah, sure, sure. You were in your room with a headache, and you were in your room escaping from the college kids. And both bedrooms front on the lake. Either one of you could have taken a pot shot of Kennard. There are four other rooms on that floor facing the lake. Have you checked on them? I will. All right, that'll be all for now, Randall. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Kennard. I have a few more questions for you. You don't have to answer any of his questions, Julie. Get lost, Randall. I have nothing more to tell you. Oh, I think you have, Mrs. Kennard. I mean, for one thing, why are you so much more worried about Lloyd than you are about your husband? That's not so. I know Lloyd very well, and I know he would never kill anyone, no matter what the provocation. And what provocation do you need, Miss Scott? I don't think there's anything more to be said, Mr. Hammer. He's had it. He's had all he can take. Relax. Why don't you be like your old man? He's having a ball. Look, this isn't a sideshow we're putting on for him. Okay, Larry, out of the way. He's holding up the show. All right, Pledge Kylie. How about it now, Pledge? Are you ready to prove yourself as a man? Oh, easy. Now, this won't hurt very much. Mike, where you been? I'm going to talk with Randall. Hey, come here, watch this. Huh? Stop. Oh, come on, it won't hurt much. Grit your teeth. This is it. Stop them. Somebody, stop them. Mr. Conan, please. Stop him, somebody. Please. Ah! Oh. Ah! Stop them. Somebody. Larry. Stop them. Uh, Hang on. Him. One more time. Are you going to stop them or am I? I'll stay out of this hammer. It's none of your business. You... 
You and your kicks. You all wanted to see if you could break him, huh? Well, you did. Now let's see if we can put the pieces back together again. He'd be clever enough to know it was just a fraternity stunt, a harmless prank. Harmless prank my aunt had. He was driven out of his mind with terror, thanks to you and your rah-rah boys. And I say that anyone who falls apart like that kid is a spineless funk. Uh-huh. Cliff, tell the boys to call it off. Right, Carl. We'll look for him in the morning. Hey, man. If he hasn't come crawling back by then. You coming? Come on, No. Back. And don't wait up for me. and I'm wrong about a guy. When I am, I don't like it. Maybe Kennard had been a regular Joe before he fought his way into the high income bracket, I don't know. But with some guys, you can only rub so much big money on them without decaying the good in them. Kennard was one of them. By the time I returned to the lodge, everybody had bunked in but Kennard. I knew there was something on his mind. I could almost smell what he was thinking. What's keeping you up? Oh, Hammer, any luck? What do you think? Uh, Mike, I'm afraid I owe you an apology. I was a little out of line out there. The excitement and all, you understand? Canard, you hired me to do a job for you, and I'll see you through, regardless of what I personally may think about you. But stop oiling me up and get on with what's eating you. I don't want the college authorities to hear about this. After all, it was only an innocent little hazing. Innocent little hazing. You give it to that poor kid in spades, and you, oh, you were very big. You didn't flinch a bit. Hammer, I don't want any of this to get out. Oh, don't worry about me not telling anybody. But don't kid yourself that you can hush this up. And let's hope that poor boy's okay when you find him. Because if he isn't, you can bet your life that one of those kids is going to have backbone enough to spill the beans. Sleep tight. Keep out of this one, but stay away. Get help. Come on, get inside. Get help. 
Remember, I'll kill him. Mr. Hammer, it's that boy Paul. He's got Larry and Carl. Please do something. There's no telling what he might do. All right, but if you want me to help, you've got to play it my way. Right. If Lloyd or any of those other college brats tag after me, then count me out. Now, is that clear? Yeah, yeah, but hurry, please. All right. What is it? Mrs. Oh, Knark. No, no, no. Uh, Mr. Hammer's going to be here. Don't worry. We've got to stay here. He's going to take care of everything. Can we help? Oh, they're up there. in your mind, but whatever it is, you're not going to get us to imitate that sniveling performance of yours last night. We'll see. We'll see, Mr. Cunard. No regret this. I swear it. Paul, I... It's all right, Larry. It's all right. Whatever is in his mind, we'll show him, son. Paul, I, I tried to keep him from doing it. What are you going to do? Paul! That business of branding, it was a joke, just an old college hazing. What, you don't really think I'd let him use a real hot poker on you? No! It was just a piece of ice they used, just ice. Now, how could that hurt you? No, Paul, no! <laughs> I'll show you, Mr. Cunard, just how it hurt. But you're gonna get it first. No, Paul, no! Easy, Larry. That's just what he wants. He's trying to make us beg. You'll do more than beg, won't you, Larry? Do something! You come one step closer, I'll put this right in his eyes. You put that down, Paul. Sure. Sure, but you're gonna get it first. Why me? Why me, Paul? He's the one you wanna get. Larry. He's the one that invited you up here. He's the one who enjoyed the show. Sat here having a ball. That's right, Paul. You got yourself the wrong guy. No, there's no difference between them. None. No, Paul, no. He's the one you wanna burn. Sure, sure, Larry. That's right. As a matter of fact, You'd be even willing to burn him yourself, right? Yes! Yes! Larry, you don't know what you're saying. I'm saying I hate your guts. You're not to try to kill him, right, Larry? Don't listen to him. You didn't try to murder me. Yes. Yes, it was me. You hear me, Larry? I know you. Shut up. You don't know anything. Yes, yes, it was me. I tried to kill him. Okay, Paul. All right, take a break. It was a very convincing performance. Performance? You mean this was an act? All this was just an act? That's right. I found Paul last night after the rest of you gave up. He was okay. You were just too embarrassed to come back in. You mean you planned all this? You, you got that kid to put us through all this torture just to try to wring a confession from my son? That's right. It was a brutal way to get to the truth. But when a punk kid starts playing around with murder, I make up my own rules. What am I supposed to do now? Pat you in the back. Cheer. Just because you think you've convinced me that my son is a potential murderer. I don't care what you Well, do. I don't buy it. I don't buy any of it. You buy it, all right. And it just tears you apart to think that the one person who you really cared for wanted you dead. Oh. oh, Larry was terrified. He would have confessed to anything. Tell him, Larry. Tell him. Tell him it isn't true. You want it in writing. I hate you. I hate you and everything you stand for. Sure, I tried to kill you, and I'll try again if I get the chance. Why? I, I, I gave you everything, anything you ever wanted. You gave me nothing, nothing. You don't know how to give, you just own me, my mother. And what you can't own, you break. And if you want still more proof, I found this shell outside Larry's bedroom window. It dropped there after he took a pot shot at you. And if you want still more, do what I did, call the college. They'll tell you that your son was absent every time there was an attempt made on your life. There's your murderer. He's all yours, Kennard. Just the way you made him.